Hello. In this video, I would like to talk about the absolute advantage and comparative advantage. So let's first start with the absolute advantage. Absolute advantage, according to the definition from our textbook, it means the ability to produce a good using fewer inputs than another producer, right? Using fewer inputs than another producer. So you can notice absolute advantage corresponding to fewer inputs in the goods production. And here, I would like to give you an example. So in our textbook, it means that U.S. can use 10 labor hours to produce one pound of good, right? So U.S. needs 10 labor hours to produce one pound of wheat. Sorry, not one bushel of the wheat or one ton. Sorry, one ton of wheat. In our textbook example, okay. Japan needs 25 labor hours to produce one ton of weight. So here you can notice US would definitely have fewer labor hours to produce one ton of the weight. Therefore, we would like to say U.S. has an absolute advantage in weight production. So just remember like absolute advantage were equals to fewer inputs. So absolute advantage means fewer inputs okay and what about comparative advantage so comparative advantage will be different comparative advantage i will just write it down here for comparative advantage it means the ability to produce a good at the lower or at a lower opportunity cost than another producer. So you can notice when we talk about comparative advantage, then it corresponds to a fewer comparative, uh, sorry, a fewer opportunity cost. Then you might notice this opportunity cost we learned in chapter one, and then we use in chapter two. In chapter three, we will still use the opportunity cost. So this is a very very important concept in the first three chapters or in the introduction sections. So let's talk about comparative advantage. Comparative advantage means the lower opportunity cost. So we need to compare with which country will have comparative advantage in which goods. Okay, so let's look at an example that our textbook gave to us. In the U.S., produce one ton of the wheat needs 10 labor hours, right? And produce one computer needs 100 labor hours. And if you still remember in the 
In this chapter, we talk about both two countries, either Japan and U.S., will have fifty thousand labor hours available, right? So, we will assume that U.S. will have fifty thousand labor hours totally available, and producing two goods, right? In weight and computer. For the weight, each ton of the weight needs ten labor hours per ton of the weight, and for computer, each computer needs one hundred labor hours for one computer. So based on this, we can actually draw a PPF, right? So in this part, I would like to talk about how to use the PPF to compute the opportunity cost. If you still remember, in chapter two, we talk about this could be the U.S. PPF. Okay, I put computer on horizontal axis. Actually, you can also put weight on horizontal axis. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I can put weight on the vertical axis. The maximum computers that the U.S. can produce will equal to five hundred, right? Because totally, U.S. will have fifty thousand labor hours available, and each computer needs one hundred labor hours. So the maximum amount of a computer that U.S. can produce will equal to five hundred. And for the tons of the weight, the maximum amount of the Weight that U.S. can produce will equal to five thousand tons, which will just equal to fifty thousand labor hours divided ten labor hours per ton of the weight. Link these two dots here, we can get the PPF. So this one will represent for the PPF for the U.S. And we can compute the slope now. Slope will equal to rise over run, right? So this is the rise. And this is the rung, so we use rise over rung. Five thousand divide five hundred. But here we have a negative sign, okay? Because this TPF is downward sloping, and this one will equal to negative ten. So this negative ten tells us. The opportunity cost of one computer will equal to ten tons of the weight. So I just write it down in the U.S. Okay, the opportunity cost of one computer is ten tons of weight. I emphasized several times in. Chapter two: If we put computer on horizontal axis, then this slope will tells you the opportunity cost of computer. So we put computer here; the slope will tells you the opportunity cost of computer. Okay. If you put weight here, then this opportunity cost will tells you one ton of the weight. Okay. Now let's look at Japan's PPF key points or like some assumptions for Japan's PPF. We assume Japan will have totally thirty thousand labor hours available. Okay, so that will be the fixed resources in Japan, and thus thirty thousand labor hours can produce weight or computer, right? And for each ton of the weight, it needs. Twenty-five labor hours per ton, okay, per ton of the weight, and for computer, each computer requires one hundred and twenty-five labor hours per one computer, one unit of computer, okay. So based on this, we can also draw Japan's PPF. So Japan's PPF is here. We put computers on U.S. PPF on the horizontal axis. For so for Japan, we also need to put computers here. Okay. So for computers, how many computers that Japan can produce maximally? 
okay, if Japan use all the labor hours in computers production. So here we notice if Japan use all the labor hours in computers production, you can produce 240 computers. Okay, so that will be 240. So this 240 is equal to all the labor hours just used in computers production. Okay, and for wheat, we put it on the vertical axis. How many tons of the wheat that Japan can produce if all the labor hours were used in waste production? Here we need to use 30,000 labor hours, divide 25, which will give us 1,200 tons of the wheat. Similarly, link these two dots, okay? You can also get Japan's PPF. So this one will be Japan's PPF. So based on this PPF, we can also compute a slope, okay? So I write it down here. The slope here will still equal to rise over wrong. We need to put a negative sign because this PPF is downward sloping. Then it will equal to 1200 minus, uh, divide 25, uh, sorry, 240. So it will equal to, two twenty. it will equal to, let me see. So 100, sorry, it will be like 1200 divide 240. Then it will equal to negative five. Okay, so this will equal to negative five. And this negative five tells us the opportunity cost of one computer in Japan is five tons of weight. So compare with these numbers, the opportunity cost of one computer in Japan will cost it five tons of the weight. Then compare with those opportunity costs in different two countries. The opportunity cost in US needs 10 tons of the weight, need to give up 10 tons of the weight. However, in Japan, we just need to give up five tons of the weight, right? So, which means Japan will have lower opportunity cost in computers production. So the conclusion here we can make it is Japan, based on this, Okay, it has a little space for me to write it down. So I will just write something here. Based on this, based on our calculations here, Japan, Japan's opportunity cost of computer is lower. So, Japan has comparative advantage in computers production. Okay, so this is how we can use the PPF to get the the opportunity cost first and then using the opportunity cost we can find out which country will have comparative advantage in what goods production okay so i hope in this slides it can help you to distinguish the absolute advantage and comparative advantage thank you so much